Recognize, sir. Thank you. I um, wanted to speak on um, the topic today, uh, and I promised to just speak on one of the amendments on this particular issue. Uh, I hope that members from both the Republican and the Democrat side have seen that I have a, a good faith in, in truly addressing a lot of these issues. Uh, in, in doing so today, I actually invited someone from my district, the CEO of Rocky Mountain Power, who co-ops, it's probably a joint venture, there's a sister company, Pacific Corp, that provides power to you know, millions and millions of, of um, residents of many of our states. They cover six states across the Western United States, three of them are more democratically led, three of them are Republican led, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, and then Pacific Northwest. Um, the whole topic today was NEPA reform and making it so uh, the 30% that, that Rocky Mountain Power has been able to create in their energy portfolio of renewables, they can continue to do that work. And in order to do that work, they have to have the ability to be able to, tra to, 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 to produce transmission lines to continue to embrace new technology. And I think that, so I kind of was looking through all the amendments and this one seemed to be the most relevant of, of I just, I feel like there's a complete fundamental disconnect between the objective and the strategic plan on how we get there. And the, that this mining debate hits that exactly. Is we have enormous amount of good faith going on in the industry, from any industry from oil and gas to um, energy, uh, across the board energy, particularly the topic for me today was obviously, um, or it was our power grids, on, in, on coming up with cleaner, better technology um, to move towards uh, a continual cleaner future. There is legitimate goals to move their 70-30 mix right now to flip that to 70% renewables by 2030. They have the plan in place. Things like NEPA do not allow it. It won't even, it, it get, what, what was designed to help our environment gets in the way of us actually producing um, these results. And, and I think the mining debate that we're having does the same exact thing. Because we, I, I, I was, last time I was in getting my car fixed or checked on, I did ask him, like, hey, how long would it take me to buy an electric car? I'm interested. And now that um, Elon Musk is sort of a conservative voice, it's okay for Republicans to buy an electric vehicle nowadays. <laughs> um, and so I asked, it's a year, 12 months for me to even purchase one. And so there is major supply chain issues. We're missing a huge gap here in what our strategic plan is on where we're trying to get to, to going. We, and we cannot, something that, that the uh, individual said today, my guest, he said, we are regulated to not put this on the backs of our residents and, and of our consumers. And I thought that was fascinating to hear him talk about the fact that they have to go with the best and cheapest option. But even doing that, they have been able to get 30% of their makeup, of their portfolio into renewables, and they are actively trying to do it. So this is just a call on all of us to sincerely like, if we want to get there, how do we go about doing it? I think this amendment makes sense in that regard of, you know, how do we embrace it and continue to work towards that end? Um, and, and there is a sincere desire, on, and I see it on both sides of the aisle, I just don't see the strategic plan. So with respect to mining, particularly in Minnesota, the critical minerals that are needed uh, to be able to embrace wind, solar, uh, the turbines that are needed, like, What's the plan without it? We have to be able to, to do this, and I will always trust US, um, US manufacturing, US mining over anywhere else in the world. And, and that's my, my sincere hope that I can help bridge the divide between our two parties so much that we will see the big picture and hopefully get a better strategic plan. So thank you, and I yield back.